Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Gemini channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message for Gemini. I know that energy is fluid. Rules can be reversed. Interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Also know if you're new to my channel, I like to go deep within my reading. So I do look at everything, but we take more time to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, see how they play as karmic themes within your experiences. It's important to know this because the readings are going to be a little bit longer because I'm talking about more things. And that what else was I going to say I was going to just say something else <laughs> Try, trying to get this intro out fast but you know you say it every day and after a while you it becomes redundant but okay so um you also need to understand that they have a therapy style to them which is where I was going with that all right. Now, if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, you got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, obviously be open to getting, having part of your reading be a shadow reading. All readings I give away are done live. You get the link right to your inbox as soon as we agree on the day and time that works best for the both of us. Now, if this sounds like something you'd be into, again, all you need to do is write the word of the video in your comment part. Again, the word of the video is always on the first card that I pull out, the underlining energy. All right. Anything of any importance, by the way, or relevance to the channel, you can find in the description box, including the word of the video in case you forget it. You'll also find my other YouTube channels, my Virgo channel, my Scorpio channel, my Royal Zodiac channel. We find all the important information, how to book a personal reading with me. Again, right in the description box, you can find my merchandise. Again, the description box. That description box has a lot of good stuff in it. All right. I'm having trouble getting the words out. Maybe you're connected to someone that's having trouble getting the words out. Let's see perfectionism perfectionism is what is underlining the energy that's underlining why your person's doing what they're doing because i feel like there's a sense that you're waiting on this person to like make up their mind what they're doing and you might say well i'm not waiting like i broke up with them a while ago i walked away from them emotionally and energetically you're still waiting your mind is still there even if you have removed yourself and i feel like your person wanted to come to you a long time ago, but they keep talking themselves out of it. There's a real sense of inadequacy and shame. I feel like this person perceived you to be someone that you're not. And now they're completely mortified. It's like, I'm like almost seeing like a sitcom in my, in my head where someone says something to the principal by the president of the company, and it's something that's really distasteful. It's something about the company. It's something about who runs the company. When meanwhile, the person that says it and that's gossiping about it is saying it about the actual person. This person didn't know who you were, and they treated you badly. And they know that you know that they treated you badly. This person has always known your worth. They've always tried to make you perceive that they didn't know your worth because they were hoping that you would undervalue yourself. This person now knows if they're going to come to you, they'd have to be damn well perfect, meaning they better have the money in the bank. They better be willing to take you out and put a lot of effort in that they have to make up for all the bullshit that they did. And I feel like every time this person's about to like move towards you, Something happens where they either lose their money. There's a like there's a, a new obstacle, just obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. So this person is, is just stays in this negative energy of feeling like they're not good enough, that they don't have enough, and that they really should have came back a long time ago. They're in regret because again, there is coming from a place of shame. But that shame was there long before they met you, Gemini. But this is why you're not seeing any forward movement because this person, I feel like, doesn't have that much to give you. And they know because of all their bullshit that you would be like, well, where, what are you offering me? What are you doing? And they, it's like I said, they were stuck in their stubbornness 
holding back, holding back, holding back. And really, they thought that they were punishing you. They punish themselves. Now, let's see how they tried to manipulate. Let's see what they actually did when you were in the connection with this person. They gave a lot of energy to everybody else. Everybody else is more important. Almost like this person avoids their own problems. They'll be the savior for their family, for their friends, for everybody else. Almost a martyr for other people and avoid their own, their own relationships, their own problems. And they're influenced by other people to do this. So there's people that are around this person that are influencing them. I kind of feel like now, now I'm I'm actually feeling like your person is connected to a karmic. And that karmic gave them bad advice. And that karmic's connected to a lot of people that are mutual friends of your person and them from when they were together. And those people are influencing your person. And they're saying, you don't have enough. You you really, if you're going to go towards someone, you really should be offering them something. And you really don't have anything to offer. So I feel like this person's influenced by the people that, that feed their ego, that can, they get to play the savior, but they're avoiding their own life. They're avoiding their own life because they don't really, they don't really believe that they can have love. They don't really believe that they can have a good relationship. This is what this person feels. And I feel like it's because they're around that karmic and that karmic just feeds them negative, negative energy. So whether this person had a child with that karmic or whether it's just was a long-term relationship that turned south but there was equity together, which is why your person still is kind of connected to this person. And I feel like that person has a lot of power over them. They have the power to manipulate their environment and it gets your person extremely confused where they don't really know what they want after a while. They feel sometimes that they still have feelings for this karmic, but then other times, they feel like they don't like that karmic. And I feel like the karmic just, that's the whole point. The karmic wants to keep your person up in their head. And they do so by being the damsel in distress. They do so by finding jobs for them. By, again, keeping them busy. Always making sure that they're giving them the time, the energy, the focus, the money. They don't care whether they don't get have love. Eventually how they karmic sees it is you'll eventually love me again because all your resources are going to go towards me. So as long as I keep you busy and I keep you connected to me, then you're not going to go anywhere else. Eventually the, whoever's connected to you will give up. They're not going to want to be in your life anymore. They're going to be mad because, Hey, you're somewhere else. You're clearly not giving to them. They know that. So you means you had to be giving somewhere else. Right. This person like needs to needs the attention. They need people to love them. And that's really what it is. And this, so I feel like this karmic is on a low vibration. You know that anyone that tries to control somebody else and says, I don't care that you don't love me. I'm going to, you know, just keep on manipulating you so that I'm going to keep getting what I want. I'm going to condition you to believe that this is really what you want. So I'm going to keep you busy. I'm going to emotionally manipulate you. Doesn't really love themselves. Doesn't really believe that they can be loved. And also is more caught up in the material that your person brings to the table than they are of the emotional connection where your person is actually connected to you because of the emotional connection. And I believe at one time you were connected to them because of the emotional connection. Now, whether you are or not, I, I don't know because I feel like so much time has passed by. And that was what the whole karmic point was to be, was I'm just going to keep on keeping you up in your head, keeping you confused. 
making you give me the time, keeping you real busy so you don't have time to think about anyone, to give to anyone. Eventually, you'll just, you know, we'll just go back to the way that we were. And so, you said, I feel like this was a major trigger for you because uh, you're like, okay, what are you, cheating on me? You might not be cheating, but emotionally, you're cheating. You're not giving me anything. You're giving that person that you claim that you don't like, that you could have been out of that situation a long time ago. But you're going to ask the people that I don't like or if I don't like them, I don't know. And they don't like me, I should say, because even though they haven't met me, because I'm going to take their supply away from them and you're the supply. So of course they're going to tell you bad advice and you're that stupid to follow it, which so how you see it is you're cheating. You're cheating on me emotionally because you're giving someone else everything. Because, and you're giving that person attention. You're not giving me attention. You're letting that person tell you what to do. And you're allowing that person to tell you how to treat me. But then I'm supposed to give you. I'm supposed to believe that you have feelings for me. Like you're stuck in the past. You're either, either you're done with that connection or you're not. You refuse to let go of that person. And in the fact that you refuse to let go of that person, even though you'll say that it's that person, that that person needs you, the karmic needs you. This is why you play the savior. No, no, no. You play the savior to avoid being in a relationship with me so that you stay connected to that person. And you're allowing that person to tell you how to treat me, even though... You're not, you may not be talking to them about me. If they're monopolizing your time and you're agreeing with them, and then you're giving me what's ever left over, you're allowing that person to dictate how you're treating me. Because if it wasn't me, it would be somebody else. And that's what the karmic knows. Because I don't know who you are, but you're somebody. And I know that you would want attention. So I'm going to make sure that they don't give you that much attention. You're eventually going to get frustrated because I know that this person, your person, doesn't have the guts, doesn't have the balls, doesn't have the, the gusto, doesn't have the backbone to say anything to me. This is what how the karmic sees it. Now, I'm going to, I don't care. So you're going to get frustrated with them. And eventually you're going to tell them to go fuck themselves because you're not getting anything. And I don't really care that they have feelings for you. It's like, they'll get over it. They'll eventually be back to me because I'm the, the one that's invested everything. I'm the one that I'm not giving up my resources pretty much. This is what this, where this person is. And I feel like you're like, and you would assume that I would assume that you were done with the connection. See, this person is still connected to somebody and they're not, they're not a hundred percent honest about it. They leave a lot of things out when they go out. So people assume that they're single. So I feel like even though you've been time apart from this person, this person is going to come back into your life and they're going, they assume that you're going to assume that they're finally single. When really it's like, you don't trust this person at all is what I feel. So again, yeah, because you're going to call their bluff. You're going to call their bluff because they're assuming that you're going to act a certain way and you're going to you're going to say no. This person is going to come back into your life, but you're you're going to see that that karmic is still in their life. They really haven't moved much. They might have lost more control over their life, but they're not <laughs> they, they haven't done much. Again, this person is extremely dishonest. That's what you know. It's like, and you're tired of it. You're tired of their dishonesty to the, the point that they actually corroded the, the connection. That's what I feel. It's like this person said that they were done in a connection. 
they're not done in a connection. They're not in an emotional, physical connection anymore with that karmic, but no one would want to be with them if all their resources are going to someone else. They assumed, oh, well, our, our spiritual connections are enough that I don't really have to do, do all that. Well, guess what? That's not, I feel like you called their bluff. And I've been getting this story a lot lately, to be honest with you. So let's try and go a little bit deeper. Let's see, do they feel anything? Do they feel any remorse? Do they feel, because maybe again, sometimes we get the same story, but we get a little bit of it different, like where we'll be able to go deep and see whether this person has remorse, whether they're reflecting on it, whether they learned anything about it. Like, what's the point? You are my true love, my heart, and my soul. So again, this person definitely knows the difference between you and the karmic. I just feel like they compartmentalize. There's a part of this person that now that has major intimacy issues. They don't trust themselves because they get into relationships where people wind up dominating them. They lose all their power. They lose all their control, mainly because they're shady. So there's a sense that this person really does have feelings for you, but to give you everything, I feel like, is is like almost like too scary for this person, which is why they compartmentalize. I know I need to release attachments with karmic people. I'm creating a plan to leave him or her. See, that's the thing. This person keeps saying that. They keep saying it every time that you catch them with that karmic so it's almost like they know it they know the answer but they're not doing it i need to move slowly with this but trust me i am moving even when it seems that i'm not this person's trying to figure things out but i feel like it's just so slow to be honest with you I feel like they did everything to try not to release this karmic. And now they feel like they know they're going to lose you. So they know they have to release this karmic, whether or not it's going to be with you or somebody else. If they want to not live compartmentalized where they, you know, date one person to get their physical needs met are in a relationship with another one that can they're connected to emotionally where they connect with another it's like no it's like you deserve the whole person you need deserve the entire experience this person is fragmented and they are codependent and they're codependent on that karmic because that karmic has done so much they weren't getting anything so they were in a dynamic of where they kept giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and hoping that it was really going to make your person give more to them or heal the connection. But that connection is long gone. It should have ended a long time ago. Your person just doesn't release this person. I feel out of guilt. Out of guilt. Because of you, I'm starting to see what is really important in my life. So even if you're not going to be together with this person, this person is moving more into a heart-based consciousness where the karmic has control over this person, over guilt. And it's very confusing sometimes if you're not emotionally intelligent to be able to tell the difference between guilt and, and, and love. This person's been conditioned automatically do so it feels right that they should logically they say well we've built a lot together this person's done for me so I should but it's not coming from a place of I want to I desire you it's coming from a place of you will do this for me I have full control over you it's like I will guilt you I will manipulate you and that's because your person doesn't come from a place of of loving themselves and I feel the reason why is because they have an unrealistic expectation of who they're supposed to be and really even how much they're supposed to come in to offer you that karmic's able to manipulate and say 
you don't have enough to give this person. You like love this person. This person's your person, and you're gonna come in with nothing because you you have to give here. You have to be here. You have to do here. So your person has to get to a place where they love themselves enough. And what they're seeing is they're slowly getting there, but it's a very slow process, very slow. So I don't necessarily know that you're supposed to be with them. Sometimes you're just the catalyst to help make change. And then, you know, you see why you attracted this person into your life. What were the spiritual elements of it? We're going to see what is this person going to do when relative towards to you? If anything, I feel like, listen, by the time that this person is going to come back, it would be the winter time. It's going to be a very long time. And by then, I feel like you may be, again, the relationship would be dead. Like this person, it just waited too long to come back to do anything. And I feel like they kept procrastinating. It's yes, you inspired them to break away from that car and to realize what's important. Do they want to be led by grief? and sorrow and manipulation or do they want to find unconditional love yes maybe they can't have that with you because they blew it with you however they have the rest of their life it's like this i feel like this person had something to compare the relationship to like they've been in a dead relationship and you can trick yourself into believing that it's the right thing to do you can trick yourself a lot of times into thinking that guilt is love and that you're being a martyr, you're being a savior, you're actually a good person. You can trick yourself when you're connected to someone that's manipulating you because there's a sense of, I should love you. I, I let you do so much for me. I didn't give you as much. You're right. I didn't show up for you. You're right. So there's guilt there, but what this person sees is, is that there's a big difference between you and this karmic. And I feel like they're able to see a different life and was able to get clear in seeing what, what they don't like about the karmic, or what, what they could have, they could and imagine better a better reality for themselves. But I feel like, unfortunately, it this person just took too long to come back to like nurture this connection with you. That's nothing. It's a joker card. Yeah. Like I feel like, like I said, um, this connection helped this person heal. This connection helped this person, um, open up their heart chakra and this person has a closed heart chakra they're in a connection with someone that they don't have those intimate feelings for yes it's held together with guilt and manipulation but it's in that the person knows that they're they don't feel safe and so when we don't feel safe we don't have an open heart chakra so even though you're not going to be together with this person it still help them return to their heart it still helped them to open up that heart chakra. And there really is this spiritual soul connection where there's mutual love. It's just you don't like the way that this person treated you. You know that they wouldn't treat you well and because of their behaviorisms. But you know that they do have feelings for you. They're just not on your vibration. And I feel like that's also kind of the message is that unconditional love is just that there is no rhyme there's no reason it's not logically going to make sense it was unconditional love in a union that the divine brought together to help create awareness i feel for your person to leave that karmic say you yeah, you can actually have a, a lot better life and awareness for you but we have to see, well, what was the awareness and what were you supposed to learn? 
So when you're connected to a person that is connected to someone else, you know that obviously you're not getting what you should be getting. So why would you attract that into your life? What are you supposed to learn through this experience? What do you need to integrate, I should say? And the negative energy that you um, have from this experience doesn't just go away until you fully integrate the spiritual lesson and transmute that energy. So we say the first card out is support. Second card out is space. Third card out is outdoors and nature. Vulnerability is next card out and we're going to do two more neglect and then one more which is resilience so not all your wounds are like I should say not all your shadows are wounds though we tend to perceive that they are there's sometimes there are gifts underneath there sometimes through our wounds mastering the wounds we get resilient and I feel like you did do that because you had to pretty much grow up on your own. You had to do things on your own. You had to figure it out on your own. And that meant no support, no support when it came to emotional support. And I feel like not no support when it came to helping you, helping you, guiding you. And that's just guiding you through life where, where are we need really the where our parents really need to give support to children. Like our when we're children, we really need that support. Because when we're put in the position to be the parent, we don't get good results. It's just that simple. So I feel like you attracted this person because there was a lack of support. And the support wasn't just that the person wasn't there. It was pure neglect, which means not just emotionally not there, but I feel like sometimes you didn't eat. Sometimes you had to be, you had to just be your own parents straight across the board that it seemed like no one cared about you, that no one was around. And that's a big trauma. Is like when you're a child and you don't feel like you have any support at all, not just emotionally, I'm talking psychologically, I'm talking physically, that it whether you live or die, it's completely up to you. And that's a lot for a child. They look for somebody. It leads to create very uh, codependent relationships, which by the way, is what this person is in and if you were to be with them that you would have to be in a codependent relationship again to recreate that dynamic well that's not what what i feel like you did with that time and that space and in the space you created yourself in the space you allowed yourself to connect with spirit I always believe that outdoors and nature is God. And that's because, again, sacred geometry is the language of God. When we are in nature, we're uh, most peaceful. When we're, again, sitting in nature, we become very grounded to the earth's frequency. So, again, that allows you to connect to, connect to God, which is the higher self, because the universe is God the universe is ubiquitous god is ubiquitous prana oxygen well it's also the holy spirit it's all the same thing energy flows through you just the same as prana flows through you spirit works through you so i feel like in the space of where this person wasn't giving you anything you had to become your own support you had to reparent yourself by giving yourself the love and the nurturing that you didn't get. You had to incorporate allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And the only way that we can really do that is by joining things, by connecting to people and building 
strong relationships because when we have trust and we create those deep intimate relationships we're able to be vulnerable i feel like you were neglected in childhood you were your own support you weren't allowed to be vulnerable you had to be strong you had to be a parent that's the trauma but the child that survives thrives so in that time of where you were surviving you couldn't create yourself you couldn't be like childlike so spirit saying now is the time to do that you were never supposed to be with this person this person was just supposed to awaken wounds that you've become subconscious to that you just become complacent to maybe you've known it like yeah i didn't have any support but big deal it's not affecting me, only spirit saying it is affecting you. Look at this person that just came into your life. They, again, neglected you. Why? Because they're not strong enough to be with you. They're not strong enough to leave the karmic. And that karmic knows that. So there's no support, no emotional support, no anything. This person doesn't allow you to be vulnerable with them. They can't because they can't emotionally be there. So it's better in that space where there's nothing that this person's giving you, but to create yourself. And that gives you resilience, but that's a gift that you had anyway in childhood because you were neglected. You were your parent anyway. So you're going to just utilize that energy that you learned, embodied when you were young, but not come from a survival mind like you did when you were a child, which is, I, they, I don't have anyone, I don't have anyone, I, I, I'm, I'm nervous. But to step into that energy and say, I'm connected to God. I'm connected to the universe. Only in the now do I get divine guidance. I am my support. I can go with the flow of any situation. I'm resilient. And I'm resilient because in that space, I create myself. And not just create myself, I connect deeply and intimately with other people that have created the support for me. So I am not just my support, but I've created the support through friends, through, again, hobbies, interests, where I put my time, my energy, my focus, my money. And that was not with you because you didn't give me anything. It was where I could be vulnerable, not where I was neglected. I'm always in alignment with the universe can't see that but it's outdoors and nature and it's i am always in alignment with 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 god really i'm always grounded and that's really what you needed to do because this is how you get to see yourself strong you went back into the same type of karmic situation but you're seeing yourself differently and in the end this person is stuck with the karmic and you move forward into your life. And that's this person's karma because they really thought that you were just going to go along with everything. They really thought that they didn't have to do anything. They really thought that they were going to get over. And in the end, <laughs> they almost feel played. Almost like they thought that the cat was in the back, like the the what is it, the cat's in the bag, the mouse is in the bag, something was in the bag, that you were in the bag. But what wound up happening was that, that nobody was in the bag. You played yourself. And like I said, that's this person's karma because they're connected to someone that they don't really want to be with. It's like, yeah, like you've done a lot for me and we've created experiences together, but I don't love you. It's like, you keep making me, you own my life. And so that's their karma. Inner work. So I believe that that's what this connection is all about. Spirit saying, hey, folks, there's some inner work that needs to be done where God brings you ideal situations to help inner healing. So what God says is, as you become aware of your weaknesses, I help you turn them into strengths. Direct your thoughts towards the light and see the positive sides of every stage of your life. Darkness turns into courage. Thus, you will get stronger. And so that's what Spirit's saying is like, this connection was only to help you both heal. 
to bring to the light what needed to be. And that's why this person has to integrate the karma from, you know, what they've, what they've have accumulated. And that's, they're going to have to break away from that connection eventually and stand on their own two feet. Learn not to be codependent. And it doesn't look like they really want to do that. And you, again, look like you already are on your way to integrating. You, again, have reparented yourself and have created new neurological pathways within your mind from creating new experiences by giving yourself, by reparenting yourself, by giving yourself that self-love and giving yourself the support that you need. I'm going to leave that there, Gemini. I hope you resonated. And if you did, let me know. I'll talk to you soon.